context is king for AI. Here's what people frequently forget. AI can't magically guess everything. When building real-world products, you can't rely on AI to just guess everything correctly. The secret is not about better prompts or more powerful models. It's about concrete context. Today, I'll show you how one simple rules file can transform your AI coding assistant into a much more reliable development partner, whether you're using VS Code, Cursor, or Windsurf, or any other coding editors that supports a similar feature. Let's dive straight in. First of all, these are contexts that get included on all of your AI chats, whether it's your composer runs, your chat, your Windsurf cascades, your GitHub Copilot edit sessions, as previously mentioned, the three major code editors all have a similar feature here, but just stored in different files. VS Code keeps this inside the .github slash codepilot instructions. Cursor, there's a .cursor rules file at the root of the repository. And Windsurf, there's a .windsurf rules that has just been recently released. Let's create a new chat. We type anything short. Hello, how's it going? This context gets included directly as part of that prompt automatically, just as something obvious, let's say ho 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 at the beginning of the output every single time. Then we can save the file and type this into cursor chat. How's it going? You'll see it always says ho ho ho. There's a very easy way to verify whether your rules file is working correctly or not. You'll notice one key rule I've applied at the beginning is this line. Every time you choose to apply a rule, explicitly state the rule in the output, you can abbreviate the rule description to a single word or phrase. This is to make sure that I can clearly see in the output which rules has been followed specifically for each one of the edit sessions. Just so that I can easily sanity check, oh, has it missed anything and has it applied all of the rules correctly? Otherwise, you just have AI implicitly following the rules and then you can only guess from the output whether it's doing things correctly or not. So I keep this always as the first line of the rules file. The second thing I include is the project context. It's a quick, short description of what this project is doing. This is not describing the implementation, but mostly describing the purpose of the project, the high level goal that you're trying to achieve. So here I was working on a system that helps me auto book visa appointments for Schengen area because I got so annoyed about it. And so that's what I described the problem is. The next section in the file, I outline the rough structure of my code base. Because I generally prefer a monorepo structure, which is not so common, so I always clearly outline how I structure my code so that AI has context on what to do. On the server side, it has front end as well as back end logic. So you have the React and server API code directly in there. And because this also has a Chrome extension, there's a separate folder for that. There's also a shared package for reusing components across different parts of the project. You can see why this is actually important. Let's say we create something really simple, say for getting the first 10 digit of pi. And directly you can see in the output that it's already looking to implement this utils functions inside the shared folder. This is without any explicit prompting inside the agent mode. It hasn't even looked directly into the directory to know to output it. The only reason it knows is by inferring this context directly from the rules file that I've provided. And then it was able to list the directory to see if there's anything already there and then create this math constant file, add it to the index.ts file. Here, it also clearly outlined every single rules it has followed. It says, oh, follow the project directory structure. And then I always have re explicit return types as my TypeScript rules. And then making sure it's a pure function, adding proper JS docs and having named it exports for every one of the project. How convenient is that? The next section in the file is specifying the tech stack that's being used. The reason for specifying tech stack is that the bigger your project gets, when you're generating code, you don't want the AI to just introduce a random dependency. This makes sure that it knows exactly what you're using as context when it goes into that code generation. If you're using a database, you probably also want to include the ORM library that you're using here. If you're using very common tech stack, say Next.js for both frontend and backend, there's no specific backend logic, then you probably don't need to specify this because that's already well known and the model has mostly already been trained on. So that's very straightforward. But if you're using something a bit more tailor-made and custom, you always want to specify it explicitly here. 
And because my specific project had to use Chrome extension, and I made sure to call out a few very Chrome extension specific implementation detail I preferred, say, oh, I always want to use the Chrome manifest v3, making sure that whenever it uses Chrome's internal messaging, it always generates a specific type for that and handle permissions appropriately using the most restricted set and so on. This just makes sure that for any specific tech stack that you have additional rules for, you can also put it in here. And say if you're using a specific ORM and you wanted to generate, say, all lowercase for your field names, you can specify that here. There's a whole bunch more like syntax formatting and UI. So you can imagine everything here is just clearly stating your preference. You should only add preferences when you notice that AI is consistently getting your idea wrong. If it's already doing things correctly, there's nothing you need to change. You only need to add things in here when you notice it's constantly doing the wrong thing. Another quirk for AI is that the more context you shove in doesn't necessarily mean better code. It's about the concise context, only giving it what it needs. Because if you give it too much, it can get confused. And longer rules file also makes it much harder for you to maintain in the long term because you might easily have conflicting rules or outdated rules that you forgot to update. So the more concise, the better. Creating this file should be an iterative approach. This line was a very specific one I added because I noticed that cursor tends to generate the npx chassis and dash UI command somehow, which is a already deprecated command because now it's always the chassis at latest. The notice that it constantly makes that mistake. So I've added this specific line here. Whenever it generates a new line to add components, generate this command instead. You can put anything in this rules file, any context you think might be useful for the AI to better understand project to generate higher quality code for you. Git is a very specific one I quite enjoyed because for my Git commits, I like having a very clean Git history to visualize all of the different type of work I've done. So I've clearly outlined how I should categorize the different type of commit messages, how it should be framing each one of the commit messages to make sure it can generate that concisely every single time. Cursor now has this one click button to generate a commit message. And that also reads the rules file so that it generates a consistent git commit message every time based on my requirements. It can even help you maintain your front page readme file if needed. Because if you specify there's a significant change in one of the libraries that you modified, it knows to update the readme file. Specifically for commenting, I generally dislike commenting in code and find that AI generates inconsistent comments across different code. Sometimes it generates really illustrative comments and sometimes it just leaves it completely blank. So I asked it to only include comments for complex logic and document things that are critical to the system's performance, but ignore all else. There's a few key principles to follow when maintaining these files. Rule number one, you want to keep the file concise. As previously mentioned, AI gets confused when you give it too much context. So the clearer the instruction, the better. When you have clear instructions in the rules file, it makes sure that AI can very easily follow your instructions and generate outputs exactly based on your requirements. So the key principle here, making sure you only add rules that you find AI constantly making mistakes and add context that are critical for your project that AI needs to know to generate the implementations well, say whether it's security requirements, whether it's usage of specific libraries that can go directly into the rules file. The key, keep it concise. Rule number two, you want to be constantly updating the file as you discover new problems. This is not something that you set once at the beginning of a project and then just forget. As you discover new things that you find AI is making mistakes on, you'll notice there are additional rules that you can put into the file to make it generate output more consistently. So you should continuously edit the file as you go along. And because this is a file that lives in your repository, this can even get updated as part of your pull request that gets committed into your code base. How convenient is that? If you follow those two rules, I think you'll find that the AI coding assistance is now able to generate output much more consistently than before. 
You normally wouldn't notice this if you're just working on a prototype. The context is relatively small. It's just within a few files. AI almost always have the full context of the entire code base. This is not an issue for it to generate consistent output. And because you ask it to start on a blank state, there's no conventions to follow. Whatever it generates, as long as it completes a functionality, is correct. But if you're working on an existing project or as your project grows, that becomes an issue. That's why these rules become more important the later stage you get with your project. If you're also like me that likes to test out all of the latest AI features across different editors, I currently have VS Code, Copilot, Windsurf, and Cursor all installed at the same time. You can symbolically link the single Cursor rules file into the Copilot instructions file, into the .winserve rules file as well, so that you can keep a single file that updates the instructions for all of the AIs for the different code editors. Uh, looking into the future, I think there's so many opportunity for improving the experience for manually adding context for AI, providing it the more abstract, high-level context to code better. One is allowing the breakdown of files. AI is not great at dealing with huge context, but sometimes you might have a lot of complex context for your code base and you want to include all of that. I've tried a few different ways, but I could not figure out how to conditionally include context files. Say, oh, here's the file you should look at when you're doing database related work. Here's a file you should look at when you're doing math related work. Here's a file you should look at when you're doing UI related work could not get that level of customization. That would be a new feature I'd really love adding. Something straightforward would be nice. Say I linked a file to, you know, like uh, code generation rules, code generation rules. I save it in my prompts folder and I have a separate code generation rules MD file. It knows to read into the additional rules file. That would be so much more convenient. Secondly, I love to see what I try to do at the end of the rules file to be automatically added. You know, the auto memory scheme. For those of you who have used ChatGPT, you might have noticed the memory feature. It tries to find points in your chat where it feels like that's part of the knowledge of how the model should understand you, whether this person's a software engineer, this person likes to code using Golang, this person likes to code using Node.js. So it notices those kind of preferences as you chat with the system and it adds that into its memory so that in your future chats, it knows to pull the right context from those memories so that it applies the right preferences in new generations without you having to manually do anything. As previously mentioned, all these workflows that we're doing, we're manually adding that context when we know it's making mistakes. What would be nice is for those AI editors to notice the issues where you have a really extended chat taking, you know, five, six iterations to get something correct. And based on those iterations, it should be able to infer, oh, this is the preference of the person. Oh, this is the places where my previous generation was making mistakes. Therefore, those are the things I need to change for the future. Here's a suggested addition to your rules file. Can I add that in? If they integrate that feature into the existing rules file, it would be great because those suggested edits also gets committed into the code base. Everything's versioned, but you don't have to go through the manual workflow to maintain this file. That would be the best place that we could be in. Now you know how to make your AI coding assistant much more reliable than ever before. If you've enjoyed the video, check out my other AI coding assistant pro tips just up there. Until then, happy shipping, and I'll see you in the next one.